be a remarkable date in our history. And why I was saying this because today we have the PDP and the ABC personnel, I mean the top shot here in the UK, and they'll be discussing about the politics in a gentlemanly way. It's a policy that will bring brothers and sisters together, not the kind of politics that they burn their buses, they burn their houses. No, we are above that. Well, what we're going to do here today. Just a simple word saying the success of your presentation, and that's to be the APC and PDP. The success of your presentation here today will be judged not by the knowledge you send, but by the, what the listeners receive. So we are here to listen to them, like Charles said at, at the kickoff, to their affiliation or their commitment to their parties. They've seen what is happening on ground. What exactly are they? Because we've seen it all for the past 15 to 16 years. What exactly are they going to do differently now? That's what we are coming here to come and listen. They can talk as much as they like, but it's down to us to make up our minds what we want clarified and what we think is right for us. Okay, as you can see, they give us their three key points agenda, they tell us how they feel that is going to change things for us. The APC is a party that is founded on the key principle that the people, the Nigerian people, they are the reason for government. APC is founded on the key principle that the reason for government is the people. Therefore, the Nigerian people are at the center of all programs, all of our, all of our manifesto. Everything that we do as a party revolves around the Nigerian people. That bottom line, if you were to take one simple sentence, that summarizes our party as a social democratic party. A party that is centered on the welfare and the protection of the interests of the Nigerian people and the Nigerian nation. Now, as a party, we have broken down our manifesto into six parts. But I'm going to take three of these. First is on the question of national security. This is an issue that concerns both Nigerians who are living in Nigeria and those of us Nigerians who are living in the diaspora. We are concerned that Nigerians are having their limbs chopped off every day, they are losing lives, and even when we go home, we do not feel confident that we will return in one piece. So security is very important part of our manifesto. The second point I would like to uh, highlight is the issue of good governance. Again, this is an important part of, an, of, of the APC manifesto. Government is not just the bringing together of individuals who are read, who, are, who have gone to school, who have certificates, Government is about bringing together people who care, people who are passionate, people who are desirous of ensuring that the reason they are in government is to serve the interests of the people. <laughs> Last thing is the question of human capital development. That is the third point I am going to bring before us. Human capital development. There is no doubt in any uh, in the minds of any Nigerian or friends of Nigeria or observers of the Nigerian state that Nigeria is very blessed. Blessed not just with natural resources, but blessed with human capital resource base. We have a huge population of at least 170 million people. We are a diverse group of people comprising at least two. 150 ethnic nationalities. We are a multi-religious country. We are a people that have everything that it should take to be a great country, and a country that should be 
at this time in world history, in the 21st century, we should be at the forefront of determining what happens, not just in the African continent, but in world affairs. So human capital development is the third key point that an APC government will focus on. Thank you very much. Over the last 16 years, the PDP-led government has been able to establish a foundation, a platform, whereby Nigerians can have a true democratic process. As opposed to the past, we are, we, our development was interrupted and disrupted by military incursions, which led to some of the problems which we now encounter. As we speak now, a PDP-led government, I believe, will provide us that continuity because that is what we need now. That continuity, that platform, that democracy, and I am happy there is strong emphasis on democracy. That democracy currently, as we speak, is being threatened by what I will call a reenactment of military incursions into our democratic system. Albeit in a very, very democratic way. To start with, we don't need the acronym general preceding the name of our president. A trend, a, 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 a standard, the president is being, is being laid right now. We are by, we have a system where Nigeria is, an attempt is being made to run Nigeria by military retirees. We don't need this. We need a clean breakaway from the military era. Why do we need a retired general at 72 years? Can you speak to your three points of agenda? Yeah, that makes sense around democracy. Okay, and that is what I'm saying. About APC? I'm not talking about APC. The current trend I'm saying is it threatens our democracy. PDP is going to stabilize that. We don't need a systemic approach that will take us back to military rule. So it, it is still in line. I am right on course. I am quite aware of your point. Yes. So now, over the last 16 years, like I said, PDP has provided a platform for us. All we need is a continuity to improve upon it. Continuity, it brings us into the issue of transformation. The PDP-led administration is focused on a transformation agenda, which around it revolves around industrialization, economy. If you look at the economy, we have had a replacing of the economy, whereby we are we have a system where the GDP has been raised from four percent, according to. It's been raised to 11 percent. So the economy is strong. Nigeria, as we speak, has overtaken. Nigeria has overtaken other African countries as the largest economy in Africa. Currently, as we speak, as we speak it is the favorite destination for foreign investment. <laughs> Industrialization. The automotive industry. The automotive industry. I'm going to interrupt you, Madam, now. The automotive industry, for instance, is being revived. We have Nissan, we have Kia. These are industrial, these are examples of the industrialization we are talking about. Yes, we know it's not going to happen overnight. Yes, we know it's going to take a while, it's going to take some time, because what took 54 years to ruin and damage, it's not just going to turn around overnight. What I'm saying is we are on a steady progress, and that is what we want to continue upon and build upon. Transportation, look at the rail industry. A lot of Lagos, Kano, for instance, is up and running. You have Protocol, Aba, Abia, up and running. 35,000 kilometers of federal roads have been revamped and built. The 
terms of education, in the past we had a system where some states you don't have a degree or probably you have one degree awarding institution. This is not the case anymore. Federal universities are speaking up here and there. And I do believe a PDP led government, given the chance, will continue to improve, improve upon this agriculture. We had a system in the past where agriculture, say fertilizer for instance, uh, the, the process was grossly abused and uh, this is not happening no more. We now have a system where we are more reliant on homegrown food. Anyone, anyone, worry or not, who woke up one morning and overthrew a legitimately elected government, that person killed his or her integrity at the altar of democracy. He has nothing to do with democracy again. How do you ensure that women play a more active role, not just in politics, but also in the Nigerian society in general? Our party has a women-friendly policy. We have in our constitution at least for every every uh, executive uh, uh, position, 30%, I think I'm not very sure of that number, but I think it's 30%, 35%, of all offices must be set aside for women. That is our party policy. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay. That, going on what my friend on the other side said, we already have that in, pa in, in practice. They are saying they will ensure we have that policy in place. At least minimum 35%. And that is what my friend here was trying to say that was misconstrued. Women are doing very well and we are happy with their progress and it will improve. Thank you very much. I want us to consider his allowance, the member's allowance, or the salary they give to the either House of Rep or as, uh, Senator Warriba and so on and so forth. I did an interview August last year in Nigeria where I said, okay, maybe the legislature should be part time, or the money they give to them is too much. If they sit for about two or three days a week, as you know, later why they should be on full time salary. So we need to look at the allowances they are paying the elected officials in Nigeria. Maybe that needs to be reviewed. And this is across the party, really. We also seen, as in the, the vigorousness of what's going on here, is how much, is showing how much love, how much passion we all have for our country to, to, to be straightened out. But one other, before I finish, one question I have for both parties. May the best man win. That's my, that's my own policy. And the best man that is going to win this thing, I'm going to give you one, one uh, line of work. That we've, because we're talking from diaspora. We've seen him work in diaspora. There's a police officer sitting down there. If he goes out there now and sees somebody being clobbered on the head, he doesn't know them, but he has a resource to find out who they are, to find out where they live, find out what they've done. How do you begin, this is for the two parties, how do you begin to identify who is Boko Haram if you don't have any national statistics record of anybody? Nobody is profiled in our country. That's why everybody is chasing money. My personal opinion, but I think if we want democracy to work, it should start from that national statistical record first before anything else. So that when you record everybody, you know who's coming in, you know who's moving from child to adult, you know who's moving from old age to grave, you know who's moving from house to prison. So national statistical record is an immense resource for running a democratic society. What it does is to help you to serve and protect law-abiding citizens and help you to prosecute the criminally inclined ones amongst us. That's what democracy is all about. It's not when it's favoring you, you, you show it's democracy. When it's not favoring you, it's no longer a democracy. So I yeah, today went pretty The most important thing that follows is that our objective for this uh, event was achieved. We got the two political parties uh, actually um, coming out with their policies and roadmaps, and which is very, uh, very interesting. We also have the Nigerian or British politicians uh, who can play ball into the discussion. So it, it, it brought real life situation into the debate, so it went all well.